better go home, sir. Stop now! Stupid fucking beast! <laughs> This guy again. Yeah, he's dead. You better run away. You're about to die. Yeah, you're not getting me again. Guys, crossbows at me from a distance. No, sir. Okay, to the docks we go. Got some guards, got some yelling. Guys, watch your sail. Ah, oh shit, getting surrounded. Ow! Yeah, let's not get surrounded here. You guys come to me, motherfucker. Ah, uh, we're playing that long range game, are we? Item. Get him. Oh my god. He's got jumped. Stop! Hey, if we get other guys in here, join the party. Yeah, you guys hit him. Yeah, do work. Wow, I used all my serum. Like, I don't get it back. A leech! A leech! Yeah, leech, get in here. Help out, bros. Hit him. Hit him. Got him, finally. Woo! Second try. Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. Dr. Strickland. This door be opened. Mm 
Yeah, boy. What is this place? Cover letter. Too lazy to read it. I just let the prompt fill in for, for itself when I run into the guy. I like that plan. There's someone here that needed uh, medicine too in the docks. It is Dyson Delaney. I cannot enter. Who are you? Good evening, sir. Who the fuck are you? Don't you see I'm busy here? Dr. Jonathan Reed, that's who I am. And who are you? Ah, some fancy gentleman we've got here. Clear off. We don't want strangers on our streets. So you won't tell me your name, then? The name is Booth Digby. Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just so you remember it. Are you some kind of vigilante patrolling these streets at night? Something like that, but the police aren't in charge here. We are, see? So you're a concerned criminal, is that it? Using funny jokes about me and my boys, are you? Fuck. You must have some balls. I saw many men like you during the war, Mr. Digby. Greedy little cockroaches who feed on despair. I could kill you for saying that. But, nah. You've been a soldier. I can respect that. So, tell me about your gang, then. What? Have you got a death wish? You really want me to answer that? Well, yes. You seem so proud of your status. Why not tell me who you're working for? Oi! I'm the boss, all right? The wet boot boys work for me. All of them. Situation round here is better than other districts because of us. Because of me. What can you tell me about this part of town? Things ain't that bad, thanks to us. We give people what they need, and we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. And if Weena says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? You should probably tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's more smart than patient. My sweet queen of the dogs. Edwina? I know you're looking for an honest job, Booth. You're tired of this criminal life, aren't you? It's just an idea. Edwina loves to run things so much. You can never really leave the gang. Wet boys for life, you know? <laughs> Kinda corny, dude. Do you know where I can find Sean Hampton? I need to talk to him. The sad saint. Why on earth do you want to talk to him? He was one of my patients at the Pembroke Hospital. Oh, yeah. I heard the poor bastard had been abducted by some cat. You, you better ask Tom Watts. He knows Sean Hampton well. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. Well, the wet boots keeping things straight. These parts will be running completely amok. Where's my hideout again? Oh, up there. Edwina! I am Dr. Reed. May I ask you a few questions? Who are you? What do you want? As I just told you, I'm a doctor. From the Pembroke Hospital, actually. The Pembroke Hospital, you say? I ain't paying any bill left by clay. I'm not here to collect payment, Miss... Miss Edwina Cox. So what do you want then? Fancy buying something from me, maybe? What can you tell me about your work? I'm a businesswoman. I buy and sell things. And I send my wet boot boys after anyone who don't play nice with me. Gang member and shopkeeper. Can't be easy running double shifts. If you're interested, I may find use of a doctor who can freely walk across the city, you know. I'm not interested in a career in the criminal underworld, Miss Cox. Fair enough. Stay away from us, then, if you don't want to get hurt or worse. 
Since my return from the war, I don't feel that concerned by threats, knives, or even bullets, if you must know. That's exactly what that stupid trade unionist claimed after he attacked one of us. Booth and I reminded him a bullet beats words every time. You're quite blunt, aren't you? I like people who know what they want and say what they think. This is a time of great opportunity for those ready to embrace their destiny. What can you tell me about this part of town? You can't trust anyone around here. As soon as you lower your guard, you can be sure some arsehole will take advantage of you. Really? Don't you think that's a little bit excessive? Bastards, all of them. This region only responds to violence and threats. You sound like you're thinking of somebody in particular. Take the grave diggers of Southwark. They must pay me every week, but it looks like they forgot who gave them permission to steal from the dead. Looting corpses in a mass grave. That's... That is a new low. Whatever. Hey, since you're a doctor and all, maybe you can access that forbidden area and remind those bastards what they owe. Can I see what you have to sell? As long as you have money, I'll show you all I have. Use some weapons, man. Good evening, Miss Cobb. Hello again. Ooh, Digby looks at you with love-struck eyes. Tell me, Edwina, is the feeling mutual? You have no idea how refreshing it can be for a woman to receive all the pleasure she needs. For once. Hmm. I'll take your word for it. What is it, Doctor? A woman's not supposed to talk about these things. Behind all your crude words and your attitude, I sense romance and a soft heart, Miss Cox. Romance? I have no time for such rubbish. I use Booth like I use everyone else. Hint failed. Tell me about the man you and Booth killed, Edwina. The bastard killed one of us and received retribution. There's nothing else to say. What happened exactly? I don't know and I don't care. One of ours was killed by that communist bastard, but he didn't brag for long. So you have no idea what really happened, but you executed him anyway? No one messes with the wet boot boys, Doctor. This is our territory and this is our law. And your conscience is clear. You kill without hesitation. Violence is an efficient tool, Dr. Reed when used properly. So you decide who lives and who dies, just like that? Yes, Doctor. Just like that. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm saying it's my way of dealing with troublemakers. Can I offer you my medical help, Miss Cox? I'm fine, thank you. I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? The sad saint? I heard he was mugged or something. Yes, he was. But he left hospital recently. You don't say. Well, I suppose it's good news for the homeless and the useless. Ask them, they must know something. Goodbye, man. Got a new hint for you. Where'd it go? Perhaps yeah, yeah. you should have listened to what the idiot had to say first. Why can't I, there you go. It's like why can't I talk to you, you anymore? Again. What? Do you need med I feel Glitched. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. Yeah, God, that was weird. Try again. You again. Tell me about the man you killed, Booth. What happened? One of us had been killed, so we had to retaliate. That's the whole story. There has to be more to it than that. No, really. One of us got killed, so the killer had to die. That's how things have always been done round here. No one gives a shit. I think you're wrong. Maybe the docks have always been violent. But you can't say the living don't suffer because of it. And then what? Let the commies and the anarchists rule? Nah. 
We're the wet boot boys. Our fathers died on these docks and they belong to us. Goodbye. Keep gathering info, I guess. Maybe I should find a place to evolve. Oh, I've got to ask. I think he's fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. My this guy. These murders are the work Good evening, sir. Whatever. Don't you reckon? I take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm Dyson Delaney. I'll try to remember you this time. Inebriation aside, do you need medical help? Yes. I feel sicker than usual these days. Take this, then. And perhaps you could try to slow down the alcohol intake, too. Hey, Doc, you don't really want me to stop the only remedy I can afford. He's the kind of prey I hunt, milady. Surely you must have had dreams and expectations when you were young, like everybody else. Sure. I wanted things to change. To really change, and a change for good. The bigger the dream, the harder the fall. Sounds like you were an idealist, which is honorable. No, sir. I was an anarchist, and I believe that exclusive property is a robbery in nature. I wanted a new world to rise from the ashes, Dr. Reed. Mm. Do you really think the world is that bad? No, I believe we all can choose to make it better. But most of us are too weak, too corrupt and too guilty. I failed for sure, but others will come. I want to know more about your past as an anarchist, Dyson. I'm still an anarchist, Doctor. Make no mistake. I just reject violence as a tool to change the world, unlike my comrades. Do you believe in a bloodless revolution, then? I do not believe in much anymore, Doctor. But I'll admit, I like your idea of peaceful change. I like it a lot. Do you still see your comrades, then? Even if you don't agree with their methods anymore? No. I hope they'll come to share my point of view one day. I'll raise my glass to that splendid idea. What do you do for a living, Mr. Delaney? I drink. I drink in the morning and at noon. I drink at night. And then I drink some more. Why do you drink so much? Maybe it's because I prefer dying slowly. Death can be so abrupt. Personally, I like to see mine coming at my own pace. You sound very sad, sir. That's because I am, Doc. Don't you work at all? I'd love to, but I don't have the time. Didn't I tell you? Drink in the morning and at noon, I drink at night. Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly. So joyful. <laughs> you barely stand up. No reason at all to rejoice, then. Life is hopeless and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you a story. All right. Go on. A few years ago, when I believed a resolute man could change things around here for good, a tragedy occurred nearby. What kind of tragedy? It was a bomb. The bomb that exploded him killed many people. Metal and blood everywhere. Shouts, fire, broken window of the shoe shop, the torn street light. You lost people you loved that day, didn't you? I've lost everything. But you know what the worst part is? I don't even remember where it happened. I've drunk so much to forget it. And now I can't remember where it was. I can't pay my homage to the dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaney. It's okay. If you ever find the place, just 
Leave a flower for me there. Even if you tell me where it is, I'm not sure I'd memorize it. Is there anything in particular that... How dare you say... Why are you so cynical? Cynicism is the polite way to express despair, Doctor. No reason at all to rejoice, then? Life is hopeless and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you... Another time... I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? I really don't know. I heard he'd been abducted. I don't know if he's back. Who could tell me then? About the sad saint. I'll try asking Tom Watts about him. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. What can you tell me about this part of town? Well, it's not that bad. Thanks to people like the sad saint of the East End. Who? Sean Hampton, our own private holy figure. Few are foolish enough to make peace with the gangs. Sean is one of them. How is it you can keep this place open? This part of town doesn't seem particularly safe. Well, since everybody needs a drink, my pub is considered neutral ground by most groups. I see. So you get pressure from all sides about how this place should be run, do you? Well, something like that. Nothing that a few wise words and a bottle of gin can't solve. You're something of a figurehead around here. I'm only pouring alcohol for everyone to forget their troubles. Sean Hampton is the one giving them long-term hope. Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. And with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps, with you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, you know. Very well. Show me where it is. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. Warehouse key. Tom, I need to find Sean Hampton as quickly as possible. I've been told you could help me. I heard the sad saint was recovering at Pembroke Hospital. Did he leave or something? I believe he returned to his flock. Can you confirm that? Oh, I bet you're right. Sean can't help but worry about the poor and sick. Oh, I guess it has something to do with what happened to him as a baby. Please, tell me. Well, I don't like to gossip, but I heard that the sad saint was abandoned as a baby in front of a Catholic orphanage in Dublin. That would explain his faith and need to help everyone. The important thing is I find him. Quickly. Uh, why not try his night asylum? He takes care of those who need a meal or a roof there. Where is it? It's in an old warehouse, northwest of here. Just follow the bank to the west and go north when you reach the end of the pier. There you go, directions. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Guy seems to know a lot. Hey, you're eating a meal. That's a good thing. So should shut the turquoise Evening, the miss. Well, I never. That's a first. Customers who make that much mess rarely come back. Never mind in fancy togs. I'm much more myself than when we first met. By the way, I'm Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome back to the turquoise turtle then, Doctor. I'm Sabrina Cavendish. How can I help you? Do you require medical assistance, Miss Cavendish? I'm fine, sir. Just have too much work on and not enough sleep. What can you tell me about this area? People don't appreciate that line of questioning round here. You'd best be more careful with what you say, sir. You look concerned, Miss Cavendish. This is a bad borough. Most people I know are afraid. Most locals will rob you blind, or worse. You best mind your step. If you're uncertain about your safety here, 
The docks might not be the right place for you. I got responsibilities. And it's not like I got the money to move anywhere else anyway. This place seems, how shall I put it, very colorful. I'm sure it has plenty of stories to tell. We get people of all sorts here. It's that rare place in the docks where you can have a drink without being murdered. At least it's not happened yet. So this bar is neutral territory then? Yeah. Tom's convinced this is something the locals need. No one ever draws a weapon here. That's one of the reasons I accepted the job. Your boss must be quite the negotiator to force such an agreement. Yeah. Tom's a great bloke. Mr. Hampton, who runs the night asylum, he's the only other man that's able to keep peace around here. Excuse my curiosity, but where exactly are you from, Miss Cavendish? Something bothering you? What, my name? Or my complexion? Believe me, I never judge someone on their place of birth or the color of their skin. If that's true, you'd be one of the few not to make fun of me. Just you, Tom, Dyson, Miss Fishburne, and of course, Mr. Hampton. I'm sorry if I worried you. I was just curious to find out if you know this part of town well. Nosy. My dad was a sailor from Bombay, and my mum was a maid born up in Glasgow. They got married in London, and here I am. Not much. Miss Cavendish, would you be willing to help me locate Sean Hampton? You better ask Tom, sir. Why not answer me directly? We respect the privacy of our customers here, sir. Only Tom can decide who to speak to and what he'll say to them. Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Mmm, Cavendish. First or not, he's just another lost orphan. Who's this guy? Good evening, sir. Have you Shabbat? witnessed any suspicious activity or strange events recently? And what do you define as a strange event? More to the point, who are you? My name is Ichabod Throgmorton, vampire hunter extraordinaire and warden of the East End. A vampire hunter? <laughs> really? I know what you're thinking. I'm just another lunatic howling at the moon, but I'm not. The bloodsuckers exist. And they're close. Mr. Throgmorton, I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'd like to hear more about these vampires you're hunting. A man of science? Well, I'll be glad to enlighten you. Do you need my medical attention, sir? I appreciate your concern, but I'm perfectly fine. Thank you. What can you tell me about this neighborhood? Did you hear about what happened to Jack Gillingham? Oh, boy. It's a shame I wasn't around to protect him. It's impossible to protect everyone. The violence seems endemic in this part of town. But it's my duty. I am convinced Jack Gillingham was killed by a vampire. These evil rodents are spreading like a plague. So, how exactly are you protecting these people? I'm curious. I patrol late at night. Investigating anything unusual. I try and encourage people to stay indoors, but people are careless. Can I help in any way? Actually, yes. I plan to put up posters to alert the population to the vampire threat. Are you asking me to paste posters about vampires around the docks? If you wouldn't mind. If you did that, then I can focus on my patrols. How do you identify a vampire? It's simple, really. They can't stand daylight. They're afraid of garlic and holy symbols. And they also cannot enter a house without being invited. Have you ever killed one of these creatures? Yourself, I mean. Of, of course I have. What kind of question is that? It's a dirty business, believe me. You haven't killed shit. Have you heard of the Guard of Prewen? Of course. They're dedicated hunters. A little militant for my taste, but they do let anyone join. <laughs> Were you ever tempted to join the Guard yourself? I did think about it, but I'm more of a silent hunter. They're more of a sanitary militia. So you hunt alone? That sounds risky. 
Vampires are just like every other predator. They hunt when they're hungry and follow certain patterns. It's just a matter of observation and patience. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me, Mr. Throgmorton? The sad saint? He should be at his night asylum at this hour. But I cannot tell you how to find it, sorry. Really? Why is that? It's nothing personal, Doctor. I'm sure your intentions are good, but people who sleep there... They have plenty of reasons to hide. I could make you tell me, but I respect your refusal. You really believe Sean is a saint, don't you? All I will say is this. Gossip has it that when he was a child, he was molested. By a priest of all people. Funny thing is, though, it only strengthened his faith. Maybe at least you can tell me who could help me find him. Tell you what, go and chat with Tom Watts. He's a bartender and good judge of character. If he talks to you, then it's fine by me. Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton.